In this episode, episode 55, we talk about customer loyalty, the five different customer groups, the apostles and the terrorists in your business, what you can do about it. And Marshall displays his disdain for Albertsons and everything they stand for. Broadcasting from the box that rocks and Thrive15.com world headquarters, it's the Daily Hustle with Daniel McKenna. What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? It is episode 55, five, five of the nickels. Daily... Uh, d- double nickels. Double nickels. Wow. Wow. Um, I appreciate that... Uh, I'm just trying to break your frame before we get going <laughs> you, broke, you broke the rhythm a little bit. We'll just... <clears throat> Hello, everybody. Welcome to episode 55 of the Daily Hustle. Over to my left, Marshall F. Morris. Over to my right, there's a, there's a soundboard, and uh, sometimes Sam sits here, and I'm Daniel McKenna. Uh, this is the Customer Loyalty Identifying Apostles and Firing Terrorists episode the five customer groups. In yesterday's episode, we talked about this just a little, and it piqued Marshall's interest. Marshall wanted to get into this. Uh, Marshall, before we start talking about it, why was this something that that stuck out to you as like, you know what, we should do a specific episode just about this? Um, Because the one of the big uh, mantras, one of the big uh, maybe principles that I'm going to wreck today is a lot of business owners, not you people, other people, not you business owners, other business owners. Other business owners might believe that all customers are the same. And that is not true at all. There are different kinds of customers and today we're gonna get into it. Sorry, I felt you getting passionate and went ahead and wanted to get you some background music. Yeah, I got passionate and then I just went off the cliff. Went off the cliff real quick, okay. Um, this is the 55th episode. So Marshall, I'm gonna let you choose. Is this the junior? You already know who I'm going to choose. I think I do. But I'm going to give you some options here. Is this the Junior Seau, the Oral Hershiser, or the Dikembe Mutombo episode? Dikembe Mutombo episode. Okay, well, because you chose that one, you get to pronounce his full name. Oh, gosh. You get to pronounce his full name, and then I'll get into the stats here. Uh, give us Dikembe Mutombo's real full name. <laughs> this is so good. Dikembe Matumbo Mopolando Makamba Jean Jacques Wamutambo. <laughs> that was really good, actually. That was really good. That was impressive. Um, man, that would just seem like it would take so long to introduce yourself. I think you probably made the smart move by shortening it down just a yeah, little bit. Yeah. So that's his full name. Um, he had a stellar 18 year career, ranked second all time in career blocks, all time. All, uh, eight-time All-Star, Defensive Player of the Year, four times, reached the playoffs 13 seasons, and he wags his finger. Every time you get a block shot that, and you wag your finger, that's a Mutombo. You know about the Mutombo. The, you just, I want everybody to practice this with me right now, wagging your finger back and forth. Just, just, just whoever, whoever, no, like, no, if, no. You're, if you're listening while you're driving, Clay no, Stairs, no, no. Clay stairs if you're say. driving right now and somebody wants to move over, you just speed up right now and you just wag your finger at you him. You say, like no, 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 no. <laughs> He had a much deeper voice than that, but yeah. he would say that. In fact, they changed the rule. You can't stare at an opponent and do that anymore. Mm. They changed the rule because of Mutombo. Mm. Now you have to like. Now you like look out into the crowd and you, that sort of thing. Like you're telling yeah. the crowd no, but really you're you're thinking. Yeah, they know. They know. <laughs> they know. Okay, episode fifty-five, the Dikembe Mutombo episode. Let's go ahead and dive into this here, Marshall, and we're gonna talk off talk about some wrong assumptions that management might have. Mm. Again, this is from the Service Profit Chain. If you don't didn't notice, it's like we're reading the book to you, Service Profit Chain. We're presenting it to you in a more entertaining form um, than you would get otherwise from reading the book. Heskett Sasser, uh, what's the last name on there? Uh, Schlesinger? Schlesinger, et al. Et al, et al, okay. Those are the authors there. Um, number one, number one. Here's some wrong assumptions here, and then we'll get into it. Number one. It is sufficient to satisfy a customer. It's wrong. Do you feel like most uh, management, that's kind of like where they set the bar? Yeah, they set the bar. Hey, we satisfied the customer. We told them we'd do this. Good job. We did it. And we did it. Mm. We told them we'd be there at 10. We were there at 10. Yep. We told them it would be done by the 5th. It was done on the 5th. Yep. We satisfied the customer. Yep. Good job, everybody. Yep. Okay. Number two, the investment required to create completely satisfied 
out of merely satisfied customers is rarely worth it. Mm. So they're saying, yeah, we could, you know, turn these merely satisfied customers into completely satisfied. We could probably, but it would take some investment. It would take some time. It would take some money. It would take some focus. The payoff's not there. We're doing a good enough job. We're delivering services as promised. Yep. They may have been a little bit bummed because I got my uh, my custom thing I ordered from Europe three months late. <laughs> I can't. I can't. I don't know that that cl- cl- I don't know if that clarif- like counts you as merely satisfied. I don't no, think I'm, you're in the merely satisfied I'm category. I'm completely dissatisfied. <laughs> Anyways, um, but. Exactly right. This is a uh, this is a wrong assumption that the investment c- required cr- to create completely satisfied out of merely satisfied customers is rarely rarely worth it. Okay. And number three, efforts to improve satisfaction should concentrate on customers in an organization's lowest satisfaction cat- categories. They say we got some customers that aren't happy about this. We got some customers that aren't happy with the thread count on these sheets. We got some customers that aren't happy about us closing at nine. That's where we should improve our satisfaction. And maybe that's true. But let's let's dive into that a little bit. Okay. Um, those are the, the if you're taking notes at home or mental notes, or maybe you're you know, you're listening to this and you're Snapchatting it to your friends, to maybe like your family or something, you're immediately like, hang on. And you Snapchat it and like, don't forget this. But then you forget that Snapchat goes away. And then they're like, well, I think that was cool, but I didn't really hear what you said. I didn't have my volume on. Um, Billy. So you should probably just be taking notes. Those are the three incorrect assumptions. Let's dive into the five customer groups here, Marshall. Marshall, I know this is something you are particularly passionate about. Yes, This I is am. something that gets you revved up. Revved up. This is something that, you know, you start talking about customer groups and, and Marshall's just like... Oh. He's just really excited about it. So, Marshall, go ahead. That wasn't the song I meant to play. <laughs> that wasn't the, that that song. That doesn't even make any sense in I w- context. I want I want to <laughs> I want to throw it back real quick. I'm I'm going to throw it back to what we were talking about yesterday, and we were talking about differentiating uh, employees. Okay, Jack Welch is talking about differentiating mm. employees. Yep, and. He says that differentiation is not something that had to be taught, okay? It's not something that you had to, uh, like, work through and learn over several years. It's something that you are th- that you learn on the playground. It's like we you learn... You just notice. You, differ, you understand that differentiation happens at a very young age. You notice and pass judgment based on the actions and words of others on how this person should be treated. If we were all treated equally, we'd be living in a socialist or communist society and it would not there there would be no risk and no reward for what we are doing, okay? So, specifically, differentiation also extends to customers, okay? Your customers should and will be treated differently. Okay, everybody can think right now, oh my gosh, there's this one customer that I love doing business with. If they gave me 10 times more business, I would take all of it. And in fact, I would drop other things that I'm doing to take more business from this customer. Okay, so that's one type of customer. And then everybody else has this kind of customer. Okay, they're like, oh my gosh, I don't know why we keep doing business with this person. They are constantly a headache and I cannot stand them. In fact, I hate their dog too. (laughs) <laughs> okay, so so that we all have that customer as well. Okay, they're not profitable. They take a ton of time. They create these headaches. I hate their dog. I hate their dog's dog. I just like I do- ha- multiple generations of dogs. That's right. Okay, um, but everybody has that customer. Okay, so what we're talking about here is there the the service profit chain has identified these five different customer groups five different customer groups in which your customers will fall in. And so I've had my coaching clients actually go through the process of identifying which customers fall in which one of these categories. And so as we go through this, I want you to think to yourself, okay, that defines this customer that I'm currently working with. Okay, so whether it's uh, tens, hundreds, 
thousands of customers that you work with, I want you to think of yourself, what would be an example of one of these customers that is applicable for your business, okay? Okay. We're gonna go through them. We're gonna go through them uh, all here, and uh, we'll start with the very top level, number five, okay, which are apostles, okay? Apostles. Sure. Do you know what an apostle is, Dan? Are are you familiar with this word apostle? I I have heard of this word. I know how to spell this word. Okay, you know how to spell this word, which which might be more than most people. Um, Go ahead and go ahead and give us what is what are we talking about when we say there's five customer groups? We're taking all of our customers, we're segmenting them into five um, specific groups, Mm -hmm. and we're saying at the top of the heap, five stars out of five. Apostles. What are, what are we talking about? Yeah. So so the apostles are the people that are going to irrationally continue to promote and refer you more business with no expectation of getting paid or incentivized. They just do it because they love your product and your service and they love how you do it. They're all in on the mission. They're all in in the why. You would take... 10 times as many of these apostles. This is the most desirable type of customer that you have. This is what an apostle is. This is at the top of the heap. This represents somewhere between 10 and 15% of your customers. One out of 10 of your customers, they are like this. They refer you more business just because they love doing business with you. Probably means you've made some sort of emotional connection. Probably means you wowed them some way along the way. Probably means your quality is really good. Probably means you delivered on time. Probably means that the price the price might have even been a little bit more than they wanted to spend, but they're happy to spend it because of how good the experience was. This is your apostle. Bottom line, you have wowed them and you have exceeded their expectations, okay? They are not only completely satisfied, that's important, they are completely satisfied, and you have gone beyond what their expectations are. So therefore, they feel indebted to you. The law of reciprocation, and talk about that, the law of reciprocation is you have created so much value for them that they want to find some way to reciprocate for you for what you have done for them, okay? So they translate that into sending you more business. That is what an apostle is. This is what we're talking about. The number five, okay, number five apostles. Okay, so for the people keeping score at home you ever hear baseball announcers say for the people keeping score at home like people used to like to sit around and keep score like who had a hit yeah where fielder fielder three to one ground out <laughs> <laughs> and now we have like computers that do that for us so mm. um side tangent four number four we said five was apostles five out of five stars were the apostles let's talk about just under the apostles here let's talk about the number four spot the loyalists here, Marshall. Let's talk about the loyalists. Okay, so the loyalists are going to be people that will continue to do business, and it's exactly as it sounds. They are loyal to your particular product or service. They loyal. They continue to do business with you, and they are completely satisfied. But for whatever reason, they will not tell their friends and family about you. Okay, so a good example of like a like um, uh, the difference between an apostle. And a loyalist. I am an apostle for Quick Chip. Really? Yeah. Anybody that is like out of state, they're coming into Oklahoma uh, and they're visiting or something. I'm like, before you leave, please promise me, go to Quick Chip. You love it that much. I love it that much. It's a convenience store. It's a gas station convenience store. It's amazing. Yeah. But it is literally one of the best customer service experiences that I've ever had. Okay, so big shout out to D'Angelo, D'Angelo Bell. He actually came out to a conference. Okay. Really? I see him uh, over at Quick Trip. He's one of the fine folk working the Quick Trip over there at Delaware and Admiral. It's oh, just okay. incredible. He does a great job. His, uh, and his general manager, I, uh, I, uh, the name is escaping me. Bill Swanson. General, Bill Swanson. Um, <laughs> I, I don't think it's Bill Swanson. But, uh, but big shout out to them. I am an apostle for Quick Trip. I love Quick Trip. I love it. I love it. I love it. So the big difference here is the fives, the apostles, they're yep. going to go ahead and tell everybody about it. Yep. They're going to be like, man, bam, te- you got to go to Quick Trip. Yep. you got to go here. Yep. Whereas the four, the loyalists, they're like, I'm going to Quick Trip. Yeah. But they don't necessarily bring it up to other people. Yeah. So an example of what I am a loyalist for, okay, is I'm a loyalist to Nike basketball shoes. Really? Yeah. I'm a loyalist to Nike basketball shoes. You won't shoes. wear anything else. I won't wear anything else. But at the same time, I don't feel like I'm not like gushing over basketball shoes like oh my gosh nike is so much better than adidas or reebok or sketchers you're not trying to convince me to buy nikes no but you're not going to go buy some reeboks no 
So I'm a little what's, the, what's, the, what's the emotional difference there? What is that? Why why do you want to tell people about Quick Trip, but you don't necessarily want to tell me about Nike basketball shoes? I'm just like not emotionally attached at any point. They haven't exceeded my expectations. You think they're like, the best, but not they haven't exceeded your expectations. Yeah, exactly. Now, I want to... Same industry. Same industry. Okay. Zappos. Okay? My mom is an apostle for Zappos shoes. Really? I'm going to tell you why. She ordered some shoes from Zappos. They sent her the wrong product okay the the wrong uh, maybe model uh, not model but uh style the okay. color of shoes okay they sent it to her she called him up hey you guys sent me the wrong shoes Whoa, what's going on here can i get the right shoes and they go oh my gosh i'm so sorry i understand you're going on a trip let's let's overnight the correct color shoes to you guys and they go um it, it, just go ahead and ship back the other ones and they go, well, I, I kind of like to evaluate them, you know, side by side. You know, I, I like I, I don't want to I want to evaluate them. Maybe I like the other ones better. And they go, hey, you know what? Totally. Don't worry. Our mess up. Go ahead and keep the other pair of shoes, too. Don't worry about sending them back. Really? Yeah. It was Zappos. And she cared so much about that customer service experience to tell me about it so that she's a as an apostle. She's promoting Zappos shoes. That's awesome. They're not paying her to say that. But they did something that went above her expectations to the point where she felt like she had to tell somebody. That's right. Okay. That was the loyalists. That was the loyalists. Again, we're talking about the five customer groups. Five out of five stars are your apostles. They love you so much they're going to tell people about it. Number four are your loyalists. They love you so much they're not going to go anywhere else. They just won't necessarily tell other people about it, which is what you kind of want for referrals and mm -hmm. that sort of thing. And number three, we're going down the list here in uh, descending order. Number three, your three stars out of five stars. These are your mercenaries so, here, Marshall. Let's talk about your mercenaries. So mercenaries are basically customers that are doing business with you, but at no point um, do they feel loyal to you. So if there's a better offer or a better deal or a better something that they could uh that they could take advantage of from a competitor they would do so i'm gonna give you guys an example of what a mercenary typically might be let's do it most customers fall in this category that do dry cleaning sure i don't particularly feel loyal to the dry cleaner i use okay so if there was another deal out there for a dry cleaner and they're like hey i'll do your first 10 garments for a dollar nice. i'd be like yes all right cool great peace out former company i'm just i'm going with these other guys right so i don't like i'm a mercenary i'm looking for a deal i you know i'm not emotionally attached is you know the 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 service uh quality is not going to be a whole lot different i'm like whatever here you know they, they're willing to win my business they're willing to earn my business i'm a mercenary for the dry cleaning company that i currently use I love it. So if you're just, I mean, I'll be honest that I'd say the majority of my shopping is mercenary shopping. Well, yeah. You're a mercenary. I don't, I mean, I don't, A, I don't like go to the mall and just go shopping. Yeah. But if I was going to get something, I would probably be like, well, which has the best value? All right. Is it convenient for me to get it? Is it not going to like fall apart on me? Cool. <laughs> yeah. And if their competitor has a better value, then I'm like, all right, switch gears. They've got better value. Like, I would think the same sort of thing for a lot of maybe um, like your tire store mm. or like you said, dry cleaning or maybe like you said, uh, stuff that you get all the time. Maybe a grocery store could be like a mercenary spot. Like, well, I like this spot because they've got better deals than this spot. Mm -hmm. Or I go to Target because they're not as weird as the people at Walmart. Right? Exactly. But there's no like emotional connection. It's just like, this is better for me. I'll go here until I find something better. Yeah. Um, how many... This is speculative, and this is uh, based off of your experience with a doubles baker's dozen of business clients. If you had to guess, how many of those clients, or just businesses in general, their customers are mercenaries? Their customers are, okay, seems like you're the best value. I'll go with you as the best value, but I'm not necessarily like, I don't love this so much. I'm definitely coming back. I don't love this so much. I'm telling everybody about it. It's more that seems like a fair deal. Let's do it. I'm going to say about 35%. 35%. That middle 35% is going to be approximately what that is. Okay. So I would say there's probably uh, about 
Okay, 15%. Now, check my math on this. 15% are your apostles. Okay. okay. I would say um, t t 10 to 15% apostles. Um, then you have loyalists, which are probably another maybe uh, 30 to 35%. Okay. okay. So we're at 45% total. This, this, so far, it sounds like you're doing pretty good as a business. Okay. And then your mercenaries, about 35%. Okay. The middle, 35%. So we're rocking at, what, about 85% now? About 140%, I think. Yeah, 140. <laughs> um, then we get to the next section, okay? So you the got 15, yep. then you got 35, yep. and then you got another 35, and now we're down at the next 10%, the bottom, uh, not the bottom, bottom 10%, but the bottom 10%, before the, the last The top category. bottom, not the bottom, bottom. The bo Yeah, the top, bottom, center. Okay, we're on the top, bottom. And the top bottom is number two, two stars out of five stars. If I were to give you two stars out of five stars, I would say that that right there is a hostage, Marshall. Hostage. We got some. Uh, we got some. Let's go crazy going on in the background here. I like that. Um, That's hot. What is a hostage? Why is a hostage different than a mercenary? Okay, so a hostage is different than a mercenary because. The hostage is only doing business with you because you are the only game in town. You're the only business that can currently fulfill the need or product or service that you need, that you're looking for. So you're the only game in town, so they don't particularly like doing business with you, but they need they have a need and you fulfill it. They don't even want to do business with they you. They don't want to. Like they have to. This is literally the only dry cleaner I have within 12 square miles I'm going to keep, even though they sometimes lose my shirt and they sometimes don't clean the stains. It's just like I have to keep using them and I hate it. I hate it, but I have to. So I'm going to go ahead and keep using them. That's right. These are the hostages. That's right. They're held against their will to do business with you. Yeah, they're just like, Ugh, please, somebody else open up a business. What is What percentage of customers here? We're talking about a, you know, a, I mean, if 35% if are loyalists, that's pretty high. Mm -hmm. I mean, it just means you're doing a good job. You're a solid business. You don't suck. Right. right. What percentage of this business, if it doesn't suck, are hostages? I would say about 10%. About 10%. Yep. So there's about 10% of their, of your customers at home that don't even want to do business with you, but feel like they don't really have a choice. And these percentages, these percentages, I would say, is the bell, bell curve. It's the, nor the, it's the normal. Yeah. Okay. This is what you want to aspire for. Okay. This is what you want to you aspire for. You, you can feel good about these percentages. So it's possible and likely that other businesses hostages are like way higher than 10%. Very possible that are much higher than 10%. Okay. These are people that don't want to do business with you but feel like they have to. Um, before we get to this last one, how often do you feel like during the course of, of the business exchange, do they go up or down this scale? Is it like a one time I'm set in, I'm stuck at hostage and I will forever be a hostage or can you maybe somewhere in the service chain do something that makes me go up to maybe a mercenary or go up to maybe a loyalist or what's the what's the deal here can i move up or down this scale i say every transaction that you have is an opportunity to go up or down and the more habit the more uh more consistency you provide at a certain level of this service the further entrenched at that particular uh segment you uh, are currently at. So if you have a reputation for the past three years of operating at apostle-like level, yep. okay, apostle-like service, then if you make one mishap, you're just making a small withdrawal from the love bank. Mm. Okay, But you have that love bank there. Okay, You have that reputation of having delivered, so the customer is more forgiving. Now, if you have consistently failed to deliver the shirts on time, well-starched with all their buttons... And the next time that you deliver a shirt without the buttons, you know, they're going to be like, well, that was expected. It's terrible service. OK, but if you do a good job one time, OK, after having the past five dry cleaning visits, you're like, wow, I got all my laundry back. They you don't automatically reset and now you're forever an apostle. They're like, that was rare. That was a breath of fresh air. I got all my buttons back this time. I'm uh, I'm an I'm a loyalist to Chick Fil A. Really? I eat there probably once a week. Really? At least. Yeah. Um, I don't necessarily go out of my way to tell you to go eat at Chick Fil A, although we've talked about the uh, the drive through and how crazy that experience was. See, I'm an apostle for Chick Fil A. In a good way, crazy in a good way. Um, but 
besides that, I mean, I'll keep going to Chick Fil A. I, I my expectation of their service is very high because their service is very high. Usually, the food quality is usually very good. If the they mess up my order, I don't immediately go to hostage status. I say, ah, that sucks. They messed up my order. That isn't normal. But I kind of make like a little mental note. But I'm still in the loyalist category. But I kind of make a little mental note. And if like it happened again in the same month, then you're like, well, hang on. This is, my opinion is changing now. Right? Like you're like, they used to nail us all the time. Now twice in the last month, they've messed up my order. Now if it happens again, then I might be all, okay, that's it. Mercenary status again. They're just like every other fast food restaurant. They're whatever. They're, right? Mm -hmm. So I think you can take this one either way. I think you can change people up and I think you can change people down based on those transactions, based on your customer service calls, based on your emails back and forth, based on the next time they come and buy something from you, you start to establish a reputation and the consistency of that reputation is what's going to change them up or down that scale. That's right. Okay. So in recap, before we get to the final one, five customer groups, number five, five stars out of five, apostles, number four, loyalists, number three, mercenaries, number two, hostages, and Marshall, we are all, all the way down to number one here. Number one. And I've got the uh, got the, the, the Communist National Anthem here to play for the number one here. Mm. This is... Thank you for this. These are the terrorists. These are the terrorists. Not that we're specifically saying that... Co the communist countries are terrorists. no 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 that was not that was not the implication i was but you guys get it i was just i was referring to the communist national anthem as a negative thing implying that the terrorists are a negative thing that was Th that was the only connotation that was the only connotation now terrorists they're going to represent the bottom five percent of your clients bottom five and you got to be understand that's going to happen you're going to have clients that just hate life and they take it out on you as a business and that is a real thing. And they are going to write reviews. They're going to tell other people. And you will have done your best job to service them. And it's going to require you taking up for your employees because you have to understand that some of these clients are just terrorists. They want to make life difficult for the sake of making life difficult. And you are better off not doing business with them. It's to the point where you're like, if you're so unhappy, why are we working together? If you're so upset, yeah. if everything I do is not satisfying to you, why are we still working together? You, we, we clearly, we have not satisfied you for whatever reason, okay? And you, like, you don't like doing business with us. I don't like doing business with you. You are a headache to talk to, okay? Yeah. I hate the tone of voice that you use. I hate the accent that you use. I hate your dog. Just like... <laughs> and your dog's dog. And your dog's dog. Yeah. Just like, why do we keep doing business together, okay? So uh, we'll talk about different strategies on how to mitigate the risk, how to mitigate, how to compartmentalize uh, these terrorists and what you should do about them in the next episode. It's going to be awesome, okay? But the important thing to understand first are all these customer groups. And regularly, regularly, you're going to have about 5% of your client base as terrorists. So you think through this. As we're going through here, you got the apostles. I want you to think about one of your clients that is an apostle. I want you to think about one of your clients that is a loyalist. Think about one of your clients that are mercenaries. Think about one of your clients that is currently a hostage to you. In number one, think about a client that right now, if you could punt them from your client list, if you could fourth and long punt this particular client, then I want you to go ahead and think about that person in your mind. Don't say it out loud because they might be sitting next to you in the car. So just think, <laughs> think it to yourself right now, okay? Who are all these five different customer groups? That's right. Um, in part two, the next episode, episode 56, we will get into such things such as where you should invest your money and time to change people on that scale of one to five, when you should punt people, and why terrorists might not even be their fault. Might not even be That's their right. fault. That's right. They could be a terrorist for your business, and it's not their fault. That's right. We're going to get into all that in the next episode. That's not your um, let's go into a daily win here, Marshall, before we before we wrap this all up. We've talked about the five customer groups. Um, let's see here. I feel like I, we haven't done this in a while, so I feel like we need to get you back on back on the train here. Back going. So for the daily wins here, um, 
I'm gonna have you. I'm gonna. You love Quick Trip. You love the customer service Quick Trip. I do. I'm going to have you be the guy at Quick Trip who is standing there at the counter, and he doesn't quite understand why the gas won't work. <laughs> I see this guy every morning. <laughs> he doesn't understand why the gas doesn't work. Um, and I would like you to announce the, the daily wins. There is always this guy. <laughs> he always. It's There's always somebody that's like, uh, so can't get any gas. This guy, <laughs> he's like, uh, hey, man, um, I, I'm, I'm trying to get pump seven, trying to get pump seven going. I, I, got, the, I, got, the for, I got the Ford Bronco out back. I got the Ford Bronco out back. Yeah. Big shout out, Sam. Um, I, got the Ford, <laughs> I got the Ford Bronco out back, um, and uh, I, I can't get Pump Seven to work. I, I keep swiping my card, sir. This is an Albertsons gift card. <laughs> uh, I can't, I can't uh, get my, I can't get my card to work, sir. Again, you are using the Albertsons gift card the wrong way. You're inserting, uh, but, but yeah, but the gas uh, it's not working. So can we go ahead and get that pump started, sir? Absolutely. Let's go ahead and get a cash or a debit card on there. But, but, but. Uh, I, I don't I don't I I I I, I don't have cash. <laughs> um, okay, uh, do you do you do you take do you take a money order? Um, well, we we sell money orders, <laughs> but sir, we can't we can't accept a money order. It, it, so so do do you have a credit or a debit? No, I got this Albertsons gift card. Um, okay, I, I would like. It, can can I just get a small coffee? <laughs> You, you, in your elitist ways, looking down on the people that want to use their Albertsons gift card. Albertsons has gone out of business. That's not their fault. They want to use. They want to use their. That was from multiple years ago. They've got six dollars left on that gift card, and you, in your elitist ways, will not let them use that for quick trip gas. Uh, I don't. Have know you forgotten why. to be a part of the people? Have you forgotten this? I literally have not even thought about Albertsons until you brought that up. <laughs> I don't know why that was the first thing that came to my mind. But okay. anyways, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, here's your daily win of the week. All right, perfect. <laughs> Go ahead and give us the daily wins here. Okay, big shout out to Brandon Massey over at Elite Cabinets. Elite Cabinets Tulsa. Dot com. You guys got to check him out. He actually just launched his new website and actually at the new um, at the, the home show that actually just happened here in Tulsa. Here in Tulsa, Oklahoma, they had a home show, and he was responsible for one of the displays in the tiny homes that were on display there. And so he did all of the cabinets. They do this fantastic edge banding process for finishing cabinets. They do all the sleek, modern style cabinets, all the European style cabinets, and it looks phenomenal. And uh, actually going through the process of setting up um, th this new edge bander, which is like the leading technology right now in cabinets i knew nothing about cabinets but i do know about uh this particular edge bander and everything that he's told me he's shown me you can see all the edge bander photos um on the website of all the different what kind of music do they play they, they play they play <laughs> like cabinetry music it's pretty impressive. Cabinetry music, okay. Cabinetry music. Um, but anyways, he's having a ton of success because actually he's generating uh, all kinds of traffic on the new website and doing the search engine optimization program that we've set up for him as part of the one-on-one -on -one coaching. So this is like, it's, it's changing the way that he does business because now he's not subject to only doing business with these hostages and the terrorists that he has that are just like people that hate life, but now he has more deals coming in so he can pick and choose the deals and the different cabinet installs that he likes that are more profitable and therefore he is happier. So he came into the office the other day and you could literally see a pep in his step because of how excited he was about the new deals that he's getting and the management that he's doing within the office. He was able to hire some high quality people so he was able to bring them in. Now he's spending more time training and less time actually doing the operations of the business. So he's working on the business more, not in the business more. And that's a huge win. That That is just like joy to my soul of how excited I am for Brandon. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, baby. <laughs> Great job, Brandon. Great job from Elite Cabinets. Uh, we have three different ways that our our platform here at Thrive 15 can help you. We're just going to hit on one of those today. If you want to check out one of our conferences, one of our two-day, 16-hour conferences, go up to thrivetimeshow.com slash workshops to get all the information about how in two days, 16 hours, 
We can change your business forever, give you so many action steps. People are leaving here and changing their businesses with the knowledge. And it's not fluff. It's real stuff backed by the things we've actually done. And it's producing huge results in people's businesses. That's just one of the ways. It's the only way we're going to talk about today. In the next episode, episode 56, we're going to continue in this series. And I look forward to talking more about the different customer groups, customer loyalty, identifying apostles, firing terrorists, why terrorists might not be their fault, and these sort of things. It's going to be really good for you. That's in the next episode. For this episode, though, that is all for episode 55, the Dikembe Mutombo episode over there to the left, wagging the finger. Marshall Morris over here, Daniel McKenna. We'll see you the next time. No, no, no.